welcome to the unboxing and review of the Yumi DG1. What's happening guys, my name is Mubarak from Unbox Centric and today we're taking a look at the Umi DG1 smartphone. This is from Umi DG's budget lineup of smartphones with a retail price of 36,000 Naira or $117. So what do you get for $117? Quite a lot actually. First off, you get a 5.9 inch 19 by 9 720p notched display. 4 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, a 3550 mAh battery, Helio P23 octa-core processor, equivalent to the Snapdragon 625, 12 plus 5 megapixel dual camera setup, a fingerprint sensor, face ID, stereo speakers, and of course Android 8.1. And don't forget that gorgeous carbon fiber glass bag. It also comes in this gradient twilight color, but I opted for this one because it's more minimal and it's lighter as well. This device doesn't look cheap at all. It looks like a flagship, kind of like an iPhone 10 actually, without the chin of course. But using this device for 4 months now, my thoughts change in a rather bad way. You'll see why soon enough. So what do you get in the box? You get a soft textured TPU case, an 18 watt charger, a USB cable that comes in this red and black color scheme, kind of like the OnePlus cables, a SIM tool, and of course your brand new phone. Now let's talk build quality. This phone is built solid, glass and metal everywhere, which gives it that premium look and feel. No rough edges or anything like that. Getting this kind of good quality at this price point is uncommon to say the least. Now for I.O. On the bottom you get a headphone jack, one microphone, a USB type C port, a down firing speaker. On the top you have um, another microphone. On the right side is where your fingerprint sensor is located which also acts as the power button. Above that is your volume rocker keys. The left side is where your SIM tray is located supporting two nano SIMs or one nano SIM and an SD card for expandable storage. The fingerprint sensor is okay, not fast, but okay. And for the record, I'm not a huge fan of this location. I mean, it looks cool and it sounds cool as well, but in real life use case, it's just not working for me. My thumb naturally sits there when I'm using my phone right-handed. But when I'm unlocking my phone with my left hand, it is a nightmare. I'm constantly stretching and stressing my fingers to use the sensor. Again, this is just my personal preference. You might like it, I don't know. By now, you're probably wondering how the notch interrupts you when playing a game or watching a video. Well, playing a game, the software automatically blacks out the notched area of the phone making your settings visible and clearly accessible. For multimedia, however, it actually interrupts a little bit, but you do have the option to pinch in or out, whichever one floats your boat. Me personally, I don't hate the notch. I kinda don't like smartphone screens to be boring anyways. The notch spices things up a bit. It makes it look different and feel different. Speaking of the notch, it houses the indicator LED front facing camera for all your selfies and face ID but unfortunately no flash so you can't use face ID in the dark. Anyways when it comes to performance, it's actually not bad. App launching speeds are good, nothing great but good, good enough, games run smoothly, no skipped frames, the multitasking is on point as well. On the part of connections, it supports those 4G LTE bands, so good connection. But that super fast connection drains battery life, which brings us to the part of battery performance. I was getting about 5 to 6 hours of normal usage. It takes 1 hour 30 minutes to charge from 0 to 100% with the 18 watt charger provided in the box. Although there's a sentence in the options to turn on dual speed which essentially reduces background apps to boost foreground apps. There's also an option to hide the navigation buttons. 
and use gestures instead, which I think every Android phone should have. It just makes your phone look cleaner in my opinion. Now let's talk about the cameras. Taking pictures in broad daylight is fun. They look good, but they lack detail and sharpness. When taking portraits though, it's not good. The phone uses software to mimic bokeh effect. The secondary camera is basically doing nothing whatsoever. I know this because I covered the second camera when taking some portraits and still got the bokeh effect. Now, low light images are not good like at all. Pictures has lots of noise and can be blown out in some cases. The video quality is okay, but the other focus is bad. There is lots of hunting, which essentially means that the camera is struggling to differentiate the background from the foreground, causing it to change focus between both. This only happens though when you have a close subject in the frame. Now let's check out those speakers. For multimedia, it's great, it works well, the low end is good, it's clear enough as well. This device also has a pro version, the Unity G1 Pro, with wireless charging, NFC, a little bit more storage at 64GB, a smaller battery at 3250mAh, but cost more at around $200 or 60000 now. Overall, I think this device is great, I mean, you're getting a lot for $117. Now with all I've talked about, I can easily recommend this device to someone who wants a great phone with awesome build quality and amazing specs for a budget price. But earlier I said my thoughts change in a pretty bad way. Why? The very next day after shooting this video, I woke up to this. As you can probably tell, there are white lines on my display that just appeared from nowhere overnight i didn't drop the phone i didn't mess with the screen in any way i just woke up seeing it as it is now i'm thinking this might just be a problem with my unit i went online to see if anybody's having the same problem with their device but i can't find any which puts me in this weird position of maybe it's too good to last but I'll keep looking online for possible solution or fix to this issue. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Unboxcentric for updates. Anyways, I think that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about the Unity G1 in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.